In this tutorial, we'll show you how easy it is to create HDR images using Lightroom and Photoshop. In the visible world, the dynamic range, which is the ratio between the dark and bright regions, far exceeds the range of human vision and of images that can be displayed on a monitor or printed. HDR images, high dynamic range images, opens up a world of possibilities because they can represent the dynamic range of the visible world. Photoshop's Merge to HDR Pro command combines multiple photographs captured at different exposures into an HDR image. The merged images are contained in a 32-bit file. This bit depth is necessary to contain all the image information. Because the dynamic range of HDR images far exceeds what can be displayed on a standard monitor, you need to adjust the toning to determine how the image is displayed on your monitor. We will be using the controls in Lightroom to do the toning to create a photorealistic looking image. Here are three images captured at different exposures. When you photograph your images, it's recommended you secure your camera on a tripod and set the controls to manual. You don't want the focus or depth of field to shift when capturing the images. Keep the aperture constant and change only the shutter speed. Now some cameras have an automatic bracketing feature. If you use such a feature, make sure your camera is set to aperture priority so the camera only varies the shutter speed. In Lightroom, select the images you want to use. As an option, you can switch to the Develop module and under Lens Corrections, select Enable Profile Corrections and Remove Chromatic Aberration. Returning to the Library module, we right-click the selected photos and choose Edit in Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. In the Merge to HDR Pro dialog box, we see a preview and the thumbnails of the images you're merging. In the upper right area of the dialog box, be sure to choose 32-bit from the Mode menu. And since we're going to do the toning in Lightroom, make sure the Complete Toning in Adobe Camera Raw option is deselected. If there were moving objects in the images you photograph, ghosting can occur when merging them. So, you want to select the Remove Ghosts option. After selecting this option, you'll notice that one of the thumbnails has been highlighted. This is the image that Photoshop is using as a source for the alignment. If you don't like the alignment, you can always select a different source by clicking a thumbnail. I think the alignment is fine. Now I'll click OK. Photoshop generates the 32-bit HDR image. Save the file and then close Photoshop. Returning to Lightroom, you'll notice that the 32-bit HDR image has been added to the library. Now you can use the controls in the Develop module to make adjustments. First, we'll adjust the exposure. Then lighten the shadows to bring out the details in the rocks. And let's bring down the highlights a bit to restore some of the details in the clouds. Now I'll increase the clarity to heighten the mid-tone contrast and make the sky more dramatic. Let's make the colors more saturated by increasing the vibrancy. That looks pretty good. I'd like to bring out the sunset a bit more, so I'll use the orange slider in the HSL controls. Now when merging multiple photos to a 32-bit HDR image, the image can sometimes get noisy. You can reduce the noise and add sharpening using the controls in the Detail tab of the Develop module. Keep in mind you can even convert the image to a grayscale by clicking black and white. For this tutorial, we'll stay with a color image. And there you have it, creating a photorealistic HDR image by using the controls in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. Welcome everyone. In this video, I'll talk about using Camera Raw as a filter in Photoshop, why you would do so, and how. When you open a RAW file, it automatically opens in Camera Raw because RAW files have to be processed through it before we can work with them in Photoshop. However, there are so many powerful editing tools in Camera Raw that it's beneficial to use it not just for RAW files, 
but also JPEGs and other photo files. Furthermore, we can do so at any point in our workflow, not just when we first open the file. We'll use Camera Raw as a filter anytime our document is already open in Photoshop. In this postcard project I'm working on, I've decided that I want to intensify the colors in the photo and draw even more attention to the horse by darkening the surrounding area. Camera Raw has the tools to do this easily, but I've already added text in a border, so I don't want to have to throw this work away and go back to my original RAW file. Instead, I'll use the Camera Raw filter. With the photo layer selected, I could immediately go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and do my work. I'll just bump up saturation really quickly for a moment, and I'll hit OK. But once I do this, my changes are baked into the photo, so I can't easily undo them if I change my mind as I continue working here. I'll go to Edit Undo to undo this work, so I can show you a better non-destructive way. I'll first convert this photo layer to a smart object by right-clicking or control-clicking if you have a one-button mouse on the layer name rather than on the photo thumbnail and choosing Convert to Smart Object. Now with this photo layer selected, I'll go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Notice that I'm just working on the photo layer, not the entire document, so we don't see the text in border. I'll start by increasing saturation and vibrance to intensify colors in the photo. Next, to darken the area surrounding the horse, I'll use the radial filter tool. I'll click on it and then I'll specify negative exposure for darkening. Notice that nothing is happening in the photo at this point because I'm saying what, but I haven't yet said where. Now I'll click and drag from the center of the area that I want to affect. Now that I can see the exposure change, I can adjust the amount to taste. Notice down at the bottom here that I'm choosing for the darkening to happen not inside the filter, but rather outside. I can adjust the feathering to make it fade out subtly on the edges. Finally, I really don't want to darken this line of sunlight, so I'm going to use a really cool feature to subtract it from what the filter is darkening. I'll click on Brush, make sure it's set to Subtract, adjust my brush size, and I'll just paint away that line of light. If I click on the mask box, you can see now exactly what's being darkened, just what's red on the mask. I'll turn the mask off again, and I'll click on this slider icon so you can see before, and then I'll click on it again so you can see after. Notice that by toggling before and after, my filter is no longer active. If I want to adjust it further, I need to click on the pin to activate it. I'm happy with it at this point though, so I'll hit OK. Back here in the Layers panel, we now have a smart filter because we converted the layer to a smart object. And any time, I can turn off the work I did with the Camera Raw filter by clicking on the eye. I could also drag the filter to the trash to delete it. And most importantly, I can double click on it to get right back into Camera Raw where I can modify any of the work I've done. So let's go back into the radial filter click on the pin for the filter that I drew to activate it, and adjust the exposure just a little bit more. Now I'll hit OK again. You can run the Camera Raw filter on any pixel or image layer in your document. So if, for example, you have multiple layers that you're creating a composite with, you could adjust each one individually using a Camera Raw filter. Now one thing to keep in mind is that smart objects will increase the size of your file because Photoshop is embedding a copy of the original unedited photo layer within your document. This is why you can always undo your work. If file size is a concern for you and you're confident you won't need to undo or change your work, you can right click on the name of your layer and choose Rasterize Layer to convert it to a regular image layer. I hope you've enjoyed this video on using Camera Raw as a filter and I encourage you to watch more of these tutorials.